I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Alleluia. Today, May 2nd, is the anniversary of my First Communion. So that was like, what, 25 years ago or something. Can you imagine? Am I that old already? But it's so, so I, I, re I recognize your joy because I vaguely remember my First Communion. It was a beautiful day, a really an amazing day. And so you never know where Christ is going to lead you, right? So be open. <laughs> But we also rejoice with you, because uh, this is a, a great day where we get to welcome you into communion. The reason we call uh, the reception of the, of the Eucharist communion is because it's something we all do together, something we all believe together. One cannot receive communion if they are not a Catholic in good standing in, in, in the state of grace, because to receive communion is to say, yes, I believe that this is Christ, and I believe in his holy church. And so we welcome you in that great belief, and we welcome all of us here, that we can continue to rejoice, that we can praise our Lord in the assembly. This is something that happened throughout the Old Testament, the assembly of the people, but in Christ it has developed into a new uh, beautiful meaning the church being born from his pierced side and being awakened uh, at, at Pentecost is a truly beautiful thing and something that we shouldn't take lightly, something that we should reflect on. We've been reading from the Acts of the Apostles throughout this Paschal Tide and uh, probably my favorite book of the Bible, uh, and it's the early church in action. Christ has, has been risen and, and, and the Christ is risen and the Holy Spirit has descended. And so it's time to go to work. And this is a joyful work, in spite of all the, the, the hassle that's part of it. Here today, we also see how Barnabas and, and Saul, St. Paul, uh, were really not only part of the church, but they helped each other well in that. Saul, of course, had been a horrible persecutor of Christians. He had killed us. And so... Understandably, nobody wanted to, to welcome him. Nobody wanted to believe that his conversion was authentic. He might be faking it so he can kill us, you know, that kind of thing. But Barnabas saw that his conversion was authentic. He said, guys, I've really seen him change tremendously. He's done amazing things. His preaching, his teaching is phenomenal. Give him a chance. And so they did. And Paul and Barnabas became some of the greatest missionaries the world has ever known. All because Barnabas decided to defend his brother and the apostles decided to give him a chance and they worked together. And I think that's such an important point. When I was home this past week, I got to visit with one of my old friends and uh, a great friend, a close one. But I could see in talking to him how the rugged individualist, individualistic mentality of America had really kind of twisted his perception of many things. It was very sad because although there are very good things about that, you know, we, we are able to, to um, we have the freedom, we have the means, we have the resources to, in order to be individuals and, uh, and to be sufficient. There's a great danger in that because we trust in ourselves more than we trust in God. We trust in ourselves more than we trust in the community. It's not about just me. It's not even just about me and Jesus. It's about us together. We are the body of Christ, and we have to take that seriously. Christ reminds us today that he is the vine, and we are the branches. As I mentioned last week, we can do nothing without him. We can't do anything good without Christ. Everything that we do has no meaning without him. But Christ loves us and wants us to be a part of him. We are members of the body of Christ that is the church. And even when, through mortal sin, we cut ourselves off from the vine, and rightfully so, could be cast into fire because of the justice of God, he still has mercy through reconciliation, through the great sacrament of confession. He grafts us back onto the vine. 
and brings us greater life than we had before. We can now flourish. We can now blossom in his sight in an even greater way than, than we ever thought possible. God continues to surprise me all the time in what he wants to work through me, but also in what he wants to work through all of you. It's been a great joy to be at this parish and to see it wake back up, and to see you be active, and, uh, and to, to have great days like this where we can join more to, to the great communion that is Christ and his church. Let us rejoice in that. This is an exciting time, a very crazy time. It's been a crazy year, right? But there's so much beauty, so much excitement right now. As you've heard, we've got a, a third priest coming, Father Jose Mena, and uh, it's a very good guy, uh, very energetic, very excited to be here. And so we uh, uh, be sure to welcome him when you see him. Uh, he'll be helping out a little bit today at the Spanish Masses, and then uh, uh, he'll, he'll be here throughout the week. And so a very exciting time this is. It's fitting that today is the day we'll go back to a communion, communion line for your first communion. You'll get to receive it like we usually do, right? And so for that communion line, you know, uh, we uh, will we'll no longer be in our pews and, and, I, and Christ comes to us. We will now, you know, stand up and, and proudly march forward saying, yes, I am a Catholic and I, I long to receive my Lord. And so practically speaking, we want to make sure we're careful about that. Be sure to distance between households and keep your mask on while, you're, while you process forward. And uh, uh, to uh, receive the communion standing. I myself prefer communion kneeling. There's no secret about that. Uh, but uh, uh, with the space we have, it works better standing. And the bishops have asked us to, to, to receive standing. Uh, so as obedient sons, we, we, should, we should listen to that. Because being part of something greater than ourselves uh, has to have some obedience with it. But we are glad to be able to, to, to get back to a little more normal. And uh, it's good to see so many of you here. And uh, let's continue to rejoice at this time because we are indeed part of something greater than ourselves. The common good is such an important principle uh, for everyone, whether they think so or not, but especially for Catholics, that we think of what is best for the community as a whole, not just what is best for ourselves, because that selfishness only leads to sin. But in thinking of the community and seeing how we can help the community and how they can help us, that's how we grow, and that's how we find great joy and fulfillment. So welcome to the new community of believers, at which you were welcomed into at your baptism, but in an even more powerful way today, when you get to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. We rejoice with you, and let us continue to worship together at this beautiful, beautiful time. <laughs> 